Okay, tonight we are going to talk about the Walter Scott shooting. Um, now, Walter Scott is the re most recent man to be shot by a police officer that we know of, blah, 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 you know the shit. Um, what happened was you have an altercation. The beginning of the altercation is seen on the police dashboard camera. The end of the altercation is seen by some guy with a phone that turned on the camera and started recording it. That's the most crucial part. The middle part is missing from, from video footage. You had a man who was pulled over for a legal stop. He had a freaking out tail light, the tail light that was out. Truth be told, most of the time the cop will say, listen, there's an auto shop of the block, go in there and get it fixed now and I won't give you a ticket. Or the cop will say, I'm giving you a warning and you have 24 hours to fix it and mail the police department the bill saying it was fixed. Okay? But they can pull you over and they can legally give you a ticket. Because you are required by law to have a fully functional car on the road and if your car is not functional, it's a traffic violation. Now, he had the registration, he said the registration was he was in the process of buying the car or, or some stupid shit like that and you know how it is when you drive your mother's car or your best friend's car and you get pulled over. The registration is not in your name. So, so they run the check, see if it's stolen or whatever, but when a guy pulls, when a guy says, uh, I'm in the process of buying the car, the registration isn't mine, the cop will suspect the car is stolen. He can easily run the tag or some shit like that or, or prove something. It's not that big of a deal. Now, the guy had 10, the guy was a former Coast Guard officer, but he had since had some arrests for some nonviolent crimes, maybe 10 arrests, I think. He also owed child support. Yeah, I know. Cue the, cue the um, race jokes. But the guy got out of the car and fled. Now, when a, you put, when a cop pulls you over and you say uh, the registration isn't in my name because I'm in the process of buying the car, uh, and then you run away, the cop is thinking the car is stolen. Fine. Your prints are on the car. Uh, the car is recovered. Maybe they'll get you later. If you have a prior record, your prints are on file, blah, blah, blah. The cop will try to chase you, but if he doesn't capture you then and there, it's fine, okay? It's not a terrorist attack. It's not a fucking man's murder hunt, okay? If, if you get away, the cops got the car. It's not that big of a fucking deal. Now, there probably was a scuffle in the middle that we don't see on camera. They say the cop hit him with a taser, you know, with the fishing lines come out and shock you. They say it was a struggle. Now, hitting a cop is a felony. Running away from a cop is a misdemeanor. Some places want to make that a felony, but you have an alleged confrontation is part A is he's pulled over and he runs away. Part B is an alleged confrontation of some type where the guy is most likely in the room. And then part C is the actual shooting. He was shot in the back as he was fleeing. Now, prior to years ago, you've seen the, the gangster era of the 30s and the 40s, the cops would shoot people in the back every fucking day. Smedley Butler, yes, yeah, Smedley Darling Butler, US Marine officer, most decorated man in American history. He served as a police commissioner for a few years, and he actually gave out bonuses to cops for shooting guys and taking them in debt. Swear to God, you won't see that shit today. So you saw a lot of cops shooting guys. Guys would get shot in the back. Cop would shoot the guy in the back, walk up to him and cap him in the back of the fucking head. It was not a big deal. Now in the 1970s, there was a burglary report and two cops responded and they split up to look for the suspect. And a guy was climbing a fence and the cop pulled out his gun, one cop caught him, the other cop was running elsewhere. The cop saw him, he pulled out his gun and he said, get off the fence and surrender or I'm gonna shoot. And the guy didn't listen so the cop shot him in the fucking head. 
knocked him off the fence. The good news was he had a purse and $10 cash. It was the burglary suspect from the burglary. I have a scented candle on over here. It's distracting me. Um, he was the burglar. It was a suspect, blah, blah, blah. But here's the problem. It was not a violent crime. I mean, if the guy breaks into your house and you're there, that's violent. That's a home invasion. If he breaks into your house and doesn't confront you, you're not there, whatever, maybe you, he comes in, takes one item and leaves, it's not really a violent crime. But back then, you could literally shoot any fleeing felon, period, no questions asked. So, it was totally justified. Burglary is a felony, the guy was fleeing, he didn't stop, and the cop shot him. It was a thousand percent justified according to that law. Now, here's the problem. This is the 1970s, it's Tennessee, the cop is white, and the suspect is a 13-year-old black boy. So, the family sues, and by 1985 reaches the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court laid out new guidelines for shooting suspects in the back, or shooting suspects as they run away. And the first qualification is, number one, in order for you to shoot a suspect in the back, you must witness the suspect commit a violent felony in your presence, no question, period. Not a felony, but a violent felony. And it has to be done in your presence. Your, your cop, a woman can't just say, officer, that man raped me. Okay, he has to see the rape. It has to be a violent felony committed in your presence, period. If it's a non-violent felony, like breaking into a house and taking 10 fucking dollars, it's a non-violent felony. Or if you didn't see, now remember, this could have been a kid out late at night climbing the fence. And that kid could have been like, oh shit, they're going to send me to juvenile hall for delinquency. Okay? And the burglar could have been elsewhere. Okay, you have to see the violent felony in your presence, no questions asked, period. And qualification number two, you have to be 100% certain. Now, if someone is attacking you, in order for you to kill them as they're attacking you, you have to honestly and reasonably believe that there's a 51% chance that you're going to die as a result of the attack or be severely wounded, like life opening damage, or raped, or kidnapped, or some shit. But, when you're shooting the suspect in the back as he's fleeing, forget about 51%, forget about preponderance of evidence, forget about more likely than not. You have to be 100% certain, beyond all reasonable doubt, that that suspect is so dangerous, that if he gets away, someone's gonna die terrorist, mass murderer, okay, like, the guy stabbed an old lady and ran away with a knife in his hand, or the guy threw a Molotov cocktail bomb into a fucking orphanage, or, or, or the guy had an AK-47 and he's shooting a bunch of fucking nuns with it and runs away, okay? You have to be 100% certain that there is no question asked that that guy was gonna kill somebody right away and you shot him in the back as he was fleeing because you knew for a fact if he got away someone would die period no question and you have to believe this to the point where you can prove it to the investigator which could be a police officer a district attorney a grand jury a judge, a criminal trial jury. But you have to prove that beyond all reasonable doubt, period. Now, this cop shooting this guy in the back as he's running away, could that cop prove beyond all reasonable doubt that this man committed a violent felony in his presence? Like I said, part B is missing. 
So if that man, after running away from the car, if that man, you know, threw a rock at a nun, hit her in the head with it. Okay? But phase one committed a violent felony in your presence, that's missing. Even if he did steal the car, which is a felony, he didn't do it in the cop's presence. Even if he carjacked the victim, he didn't do it in the cop's presence. Okay? So, this guy has, in my opinion, not a leg to fucking stand on. The Mike Brown case, 15 eyewitnesses, 9 of them being black, saw Mike Brown attack Darren Wilson. Okay? The forensics evidence and the medical examinations prove beyond all doubt that Mike Brown was shot in the front as he was advancing. The shooting in the back was a lie perpetrated later by his accomplice, Dorian Johnson. So if you ask me, this, kid, this guy's fucked. Now the guy has a pregnant wife and the police department fired his ass, but the police department said they will continue giving his wife benefits because it's not her fault and it's not the unborn baby's fault. So they're gonna keep track of the, them for a while, I don't know how long though. But, you know, that's why I say it. Before you pull the fucking trigger, you gotta be careful now. Now, 35, 40 years ago, this guy would've been fine. You shoot yourself in the back, no big fucking deal. I mean, they, they, they used to, the cops used to fucking execute people for Christ's sake. And it was legal for decades. Sometimes it was justified, sometimes it wasn't, but, you know, 40, 50 years ago, this cop would've been just fine. He would have probably got a medal for it too. But now, after that Supreme Court verdict in 1985, that is it. First of all, you know, you want to bring the suspect in. The minute he ran away from the car, he was automatically a suspect. I mean, it's a fucking traffic violation. Pay the fucking ticket and be done with it. Or if you think the cop is wrong, write not guilty on the ticket, mail it to the traffic judge and ask for a hearing. What the fuck? I mean, granted the cop is wrong, most likely, but you have to understand, sometimes you do, the, the suspect does a stupid fucking thing. I mean, once again, we have complete stupidity here. You're in a car, cops got you for a traffic violation, chill the fuck out. I mean, chill the fuck out. The minute you run away, you know damn well he's going to chase you. You're behind on your fucking child support. Well, pay your fucking child support or cut your own fucking balls off. Okay, once again, stupidity on behalf of the suspect who was not an innocent bystander and the cop who went beyond his duties. I mean, over fucking not. This is over fucking nothing. If a cop pulls you over. Put your fucking hands on the wheel and be cool. If he gives you a ticket and you know you did it, pay the fucking ticket. If he gives you a ticket and you think you didn't, you're innocent somehow, ask for a fucking hearing with a traffic judge. You can do that. But don't fucking run away. Don't resist. I mean, over fucking nothing. Over fucking nothing. No, what the fuck? I mean, I mean, a black guy driving a Mercedes. He owes child support. He's got a criminal record, and he runs from the white cop. Okay. I mean, cue the fucking racial jokes for Christ's sake, but. And as for you shooting the guy, okay, if you're on that end, if you're the cop, or if you're the armed citizen, don't fire the fucking gun unless you are satisfied you have a very, very serious issue at hand. Okay, if the guy gets away, so the fuck what? And they think they have on the videotape the cop picking up the stun gun and bringing it over to the body. Many years ago, cops, every cop in America many years ago, had a beat up $5.38 special in the trunk of his car. 
And if he shot a guy and he wasn't satisfied with the look of it, he went into the car, got the gun, put it in the guy's hand. Oh, well, he pulled a gun on me and I had to shoot him. Okay, this looks like a drop job where you shoot the guy, say he got my taser and put the taser next to the body. Okay, like I say, and even if he gets off on the murder, if they can prove, which is pretty fucking obvious, that he planted evidence or moved evidence, that right there is three years in prison. Moving a body, moving a gun, moving a taser, moving evidence before it's cataloged is a felony. It's a lot of times the cop gets to the scene and he moves the case, uh, a bullet casing. Oh shit, I forgot to do that. Okay, okay. I move the bullet casing and then I put it back. My bad, not a big deal. It happens, okay? I walked into the scene and I accidentally kicked something. It ended up being a knife. Oh Christ, let me write that down. Not, my, not a bad deal. Okay, it happens. But to deliberately pick up a piece of evidence and move it, or to deliberately falsify a document in relation to a shooting is a felony. Okay, so don't fuck with the evidence because it's a felony right there. Okay, don't shoot the fucking guy in the back unless he's got a knife in his hand or he's attacking a fucking nun. Okay, I mean, people make the stupidest fucking decisions. So the fuck what the guy gets away. I mean, this is what happens when stupidity mixes. You got two dumbasses, the cop and the suspect, they're both fucking dumbasses. One dumbass runs the fuck away, the other dumbass says fuck this and shoots him. Okay, stupidity. Is it fucking worth this shit? Is it worth living the rest of your fucking life knowing you killed a guy? Yeah, the guy tries to kill you and you gotta kill him to survive, fine. The guy's getting away from you. And you fucking shoot him in the back. Do you want to live with that the rest of your fucking life? After what you saw with Darren Wilson and Mike Brown. After that fucking explosion. Okay. You're a white fucking cop. You see a black fucking suspect. And you're like, you know what? Yeah, I mean, just, yeah, what the fuck is wrong with you? I mean, please. Please. Give me a fucking break. You know, some people are so fucking stupid. And on top of that, cops look bad. Do you know my fucking police department got threats? One time I went to my police department, the first precinct to pick up a fucking check, and the door was locked. I had to ring the intercom, uh, say my name. The sergeant had to answer the door. I had to flash my police ID, go inside, get my paycheck. The sergeant had a female sergeant. She had to escort me to the door, walk me out, close the door behind me, lock it. Okay, my police department got death threats over the Darren Wilson incident, thousand miles away. Okay, I'm a fucking crossing guard, and I had to look over my shoulder because of the hatred towards police in this fucking country over this shit. Okay, you, you're so fucking stupid. It's you're so fucking stupid. Uh, over fucking nothing. Pay the fucking traffic ticket. Pay the fucking child support. Shut your fucking mouth. And on the other side, if the guy gets away, so the fuck away. You got the car back. It ended up not being stolen anyway. What a fucking idiot. What a fucking disgrace. Alright, thank you.